نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله we going to cover from pages 23 to 34 today i think um, it's it's ambitious but uh, inshallah we'll get as much done as we can be in la and we're going to start uh, on the part uh, where the author transitions into the hijrah to the messenger of allah alayhi salatu so um, before we get started inshallah we need to get those juices flowing because you guys look a little tired i know class is a half hour later tonight so bismillah fadl sheikh By the end of tonight's lesson, you should be able to answer these questions. How does Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, define the migration to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So we, we, we covered the first part of the book uh, after dealing with the definition of terms, al-bir, taqwa, ithm, adwan, and so forth. The author moved on to talking about what? Hijrah to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what that requires. Uh, he's going to, uh, after uh, you know, giving us a, s a small introduction or a short introduction, he's going to define for us what it looks like when we say hijrah to the Prophet Ali was saying. What does that even mean? Now. Two, what is the relationship between the two testimonies of faith and the two hijras? Tell you, what's the two testimonies of faith? What are they? Shahadatain, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. And what are the two hijras? I thought it was the hijra of the body and the hijra of the heart. La, <laughs> here, the two hijras are the two two hijras that relate to the heart. So one of them is to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and the other is to the Messenger of Allah Alayhi Salatu Wassalam. Now, how is this related to the two questions that we will be asked on Judgment Day? Hey, what are those two questions? What two questions you get asked on Yom Al-Qiyam? Mm -hmm, nice. Hey, hey, we'll get there, inshallah. Fadda. Allah stresses the importance of believers making the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a judge. A judge in matters of dispute. Mention three ways this is emphasized in the ayah of Surah Al-Nisa. Yeah, the 65th ayah of Surah Al-Nisa which is the first uh, text uh, that the author brings to uh, prove that it is an obligation to make hijrah to the Prophet ﷺ. So that being said, inshallah, uh, we talked about the main broad themes of this book. The first, the two types of cooperation, that is the cooperation that is commanded, which is what? Uh, what, what type of cooperation is commanded? Uh, cooperating with, your, with the fellow Muslims and joining the good and joining the evil. Uh, cooperating in bitter and taqwa. Right. right. And which, which cooperation is forbidden? Uh, and and the Yeah. Tayyip. And then, you know, we covered the, the, those. The, it says definition of bitter and taqwa, but there are several definitions, but he concentrated on a bitter and a taqwa. Then he talked about migration to Allah. And now we're going to cover migration to Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is going to take at least three lessons. Which means that that'll take us to lesson 10. And then, inshallah, uh, we have to uh, reschedule so that we can finish uh, this risala before Ramadan, bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Because there are some very important aspects, as you can see, the importance of contemplating means of the Quran. We have to cover that, inshallah, we'll cover that before Ramadan, because it will change the way as you read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bi'idnillah. Tayyip, fadal. So we're going to start there on page 23. And uh, quite frankly, a, sorry, uh, a lot of this does not need a, a ton of explanation. What it needs is that you read it asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you understanding 
asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the words touch your heart because you don't want to read. These are not words that you're supposed to read as in like you, you just understand them. Because there's a difference between understanding and actually embodying, right? Actually allowing it to hit your heart. So, inshallah, bismillah, Shaykh. Fadlah. Migration of a migrator to the messenger, a known traveler. <laughs> Migration to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a clear landmark, yet it has been lost to people, so that now only its name exists. It says they, it's as if they've heard of this place, right, that they're supposed to go. It's clear. It, it's there on the map. But it's been lost, and, like now only its name. There's this thing called the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, in name. But are people actually following the Messenger ﷺ? We'll look at it, inshallah. Fadda. It is a course that has been abandoned by them, and they went to smaller paths, so that only its outline remains. It is a road whose features have been obliterated, wiped out by dusty winds, and whose water sources have been dried by the enemies. A person on this course is a stranger among the people, unique in every region and gathering, distant despite physical proximity. Stop, slow down. Let's take this step by step. A person upon this course. What course? Making that hijra, migrating. Imagine yourself on that road. You're traveling that path. A person on that course is a stranger among the people. He's a gharib one. And he says he's unique in every region and gathering. There's not too many other people that are like him. In fact, he may even seem weird, not just as in a stranger, like a person who doesn't, is not from that place, but is oftentimes looked at as being like, what's wrong with him, right? Because he's unique in, 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 his, in his way. Distant despite physical proximity. Distant. Um, and uh, like I said, let this sink in. I mean, have you ever been in a place where you just felt like you didn't belong? Even though the people, they were very close. I, think, I mean, before COVID, of course. Right? So they were really close. But something just didn't, f you didn't feel like you belonged amongst them. Uh, and subhanAllah, I mean, that even though you were close. Keep going. And, and in every region and gathering, distant, despite physical proximity, and lonely, despite numerous neighbors, he is dejected with that which delights him, that is the common people. And he is de uh, delighted with that which dejects them. He resides when they travel, and travels when they reside. Mm -hmm. He is alone in the way that he chose for seeking his goal, feeling no satisfaction until he achieves his prize. Mm -hmm. He is with the people by body, but remote from them by goal. Because his only goal is the pleasure of Allah, is the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal in the manner that the Prophet prescribed. So he's not following some other paths of other people. And, you know, some people say, well, all paths lead to God, and no matter which way you go. And no, he's trying to do his best, or she is trying to do her best to follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ in order to please Allah Azza wa Jal. And so, uh, though this per th they are with people and body, they are remote from them by goal. Yeah. Their eyes, those people's eyes, sleep indifferently, neglecting the pursuit of guidance while he spends his nights awake. They are lax about migration to the Prophet ﷺ while he's vigorously, while he vigorously pursues it, they scorn his disagreement with their views, and they contend him for denouncing their ignorance and deviation. They cast their doubts upon him, keeping close watch over him. They anxiously await his death to rid them of him. 
The traveler's response to the and, that, and that's because he makes them uncomfortable. He, he's somebody who's reminding them of their purpose in life. Mm -hmm. and maybe even in his own home. Maybe even in his own home. But it's just like, just you know, they, they're uncomfortable. Because his objective only is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything else takes a back seat. And other people who are attached to the dunya, attached to the to whatever it is, the other enjoyment and play and takatharun bainakum uh tafakharun bainakum wa takatharun fil amwari wal awlad and they just want to, you know, have a whole bunch of, of wealth. That's their thing. Everything, you know, they talk about. Every time they get together, it's how to how to make money and how they're going to get more money and how this is going to get them money and what they're going to do with the money when they get it. And, then, and that becomes every, that become everything. So their whole attachment is to that which is transient, that which is impermanent and is going away. And this person is attached to the Akhira. As Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, ابتحلت الدنيا مدبرة. وارتحلت الآخرة مقبلة ولكل منهما بنون فكونوا من أبناء الآخرة ولا تكونوا من أبناء الدنيا. said the the dunya is is actually traveling away from you. طيب. think about it. the dunya is traveling away. You can't catch it. It's too fast. وَارْتَحَلَتِ الْآخِرَةُ مُقْبِلَةُ And the Akhirah is traveling towards you. Right? You can't get away. Right? You can't catch the dunya and you can't get away from the Akhirah. It's coming to get you. وَلِكُلٍ مِنْهُمَا بَنُونَ Each one of them has children. The dunya has children. The Akhirah has children. فَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا Be from the children of the hereafter. And don't be from the children of the dunya. Then he goes on to say, because uh, today is حساب ولا عمل وغدا عمل uh, اليوم عمل ولا حساب Today, there is, you know, there's work, there's actions, there's deeds that can be done. With no حساب. يعني you're not going to be held accountable as in the final account the final judgment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. And tomorrow there's judgment and no chance to do action. Right? So the, the point is that uh, this person who is truly migrating to the Prophet, والسلام, again, he hasn't defined it yet for a reason because he wants you to just, he wants you to feel the importance of the teachings of the Prophet, والسلام, his sunnah, his way. Uh, and then in the rest of this chapter, inshallah, he's going to go into uh, provide evidence for his claim that your salvation absolutely depends on this hijrah. You cannot be, you cannot be successful in the next life, and you won't be successful in this life unless you make that hijrah to the Prophet. Like an Imam Malik rahimahullahu ta'ala said, he said, As sunnatu ka safinati nuhin, man rakibaha naja, wa man takhallafa anha halak. And the sunnah is like Noah's ark, it's like the, the, like the ark of Nuh. Whoever gets aboard will be saved, and whoever does not, like Nuh's son said to him, you know, when his father said to him, come get on, it'll come manna. Get, get on board. This is his son, the son of a prophet. It'll come manna. Get on with us. He said, Call us at Awi ila Jabali Yasimuni min al man. I'm just going to go over there. You're talking about rain coming? It's a whole mountain over there. I'll just get up on the mountain. You know, everything's going to be okay. So he was from amongst those who drowned. Because he didn't, there's only, the only ones that survived were the ones that got on, got on the ark. The sunnah, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, says the sunnah is like Noah's ark. Whoever gets on will be saved. 
If that's, if that's what you want for your life, you want the sunnah of the Prophet Allah will give you tawfiq, you'll be safe. And whoever doesn't, تَخَلَّفَ عِنْهَا halak. Then they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be destroyed from the inside before they get destroyed in the year after. Allah musta'an. Allah musta'an. I'm, you know, the, the reality is, is that, and, and everybody has a sense of this, and some people feel it more than others. But, but leaving the way of the Prophet والسلام, leaves a lot of emptiness inside. It leaves a person desiring. It leaves a person looking for something. They may not know what they're looking for. But if they leave that way, the way of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then they're not going to feel complete and they're not going to feel whole. They're going to look for somebody else or something else to make them feel complete and to feel whole. A lot of people look for that in marriage. They look for somebody else to make them feel whole. Wallahu mustaan. No, Say, do you wait for us anything except one of the two best things? Martyrdom victory. While we await for you that Allah will afflict you with the punishment from himself or at our hands, so wait. We too are waiting with you. Yeah, so in other words, this person who is is intent and in, in, in earnestly trying to make that hijrah to the Prophet ﷺ, when those around him are wishing for his death, he likewise responds with, right? You can then just wait, because we are also waiting. And what we expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is khair. It's good. Now. And he would recite, he, the messenger, said, My Lord, Rabbi, judge between us in truth. Our Lord is the most merciful, the one whose help is sought against that which you describe. He would further remind them of that which an Arab poet said, Nahnu wa iyakum then, I'm sorry, both we and you will die. And then, the true loser at the time of reckoning is he who will be regretful. Definition of migration to the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be your own judge. Migration to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is therefore a most, a most important matter. It is a long and difficult way, except for those who are yearning for it. Right? Yes, yes. It is a long and difficult way, except for those who yearn for it. Right? For those who genuinely yearn, are eager to be amongst the true followers of Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and well, like, you know, I think it's important for us like some people are are proud to be followers of whoever they're, you know, you know wh whoever they're following. I'm saying even I'm saying outside of Islam, right? They're very proud to be followers of whoever it is they may be. And those people are uh, a lot of them are shayateen from the ins. Yeah, I mean, they they they're devils amongst men. And then some of them are you know people who you know openly display morality or whatever it may be and. It may seem like it's honorable to follow them. And, and the reality is, is that it's honorable to be a follower of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, there's no way to be a, a good leader without being a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you recall, when we did uh, Ibn al-Qayyim's uh, risala, his, his letter to his friend and to a companion of his, and we covered the ayah. 
lil muttaqina imama. Make us an imam for the muttaqin. Tayyib, how did Mujahid explain that ayah? Who remembers? Yeah, to make us what? Followers of the imams of the past. Because you will not be a leader for the muttaqin until you become a follower of the muttaqin that preceded you. Right? And, and that's the reality. And so being a follower is not a bad thing as long as you're following those who are on the way of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And ultimately it is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is your leader. No. Be your own judge. Migration to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, as I said, migration to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is therefore a most important matter. This is a long and difficult way except for those who are yearning for it. As a poet once said, it is far for the lazy or languid, but as for the person with yearning, it is near by Allah's life. Could you explain that? Yeah, so um, it, it is permissible for, uh, for a Muslim to swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or any of his attributes. So uh, here, uh, it's, I think it's La Amrullah. I, I forget exactly how it comes in the Arabic. But um, that's, that's, it, it's, it's a means of swearing that emphasizes what you're about to say. By Allah's life. Like, it's like saying, Wallahi, but he's adding I've something. I've never heard Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got yeah. scared for a second. Huh? Hey, you say it where? Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. This migration is nothing but a radiant light. Any darkness that dims it is only because of you. It is a full moon illuminating the east and west corners of the earth. Any clouds or dust that mar it are only because of you. It is a clear and sweet spring of water. Any contaminants falling into it are only because of you. Is the origin of a great bounty of which you could be totally unaware. Listen then to the importance of this migration, together with the evidence for it. Be a judge of yourself before Allah. Be a judge of yourself. Okay, so the, the, before we get any further, he is laying out the importance of this hijrah and talking about how beautiful it is and how it provides you light and how it is pure. So now he's saying, look, Here's the issue, though. You're going to hear some things that may shake you. If you put yourself in light of what you're reading, you may find that you're falling short. And a lot of times, people don't like to be challenged. Uh, they, they like the fuzzy, you know, fuzzy speeches, feel-good khutbahs. They come to the match, I feel good, you know, I'm charged, I'm energized, and I go home and, you know... It, the, but if somebody is Nasser to you, now, and, and I just, I don't want to go too far off in this, but I really want us to understand something. If you were walking around with mustard on your face all day, right, and all your friends were like, oh man, mashallah, you look good, bro, alhamdulillah, you go into a job interview, and nobody says anything to you, and then you get smacked with reality because they look at you in a job interview, they're like, nah, so, you okay? Say, yeah. Say, do you take medication? Say, no. Well, you might need to. So what's, what's wrong? Look how you look. What's wrong with this guy? Because nobody told you along the way. Everybody just was encouraging you. And that's kind of how the culture is right now, right? Everybody get participation trophies and all this other stuff, right? Everything is, everybody gets a clap. And, and it's not to say that you're supposed to speak down to people or anything like that. But sometimes you have to face reality here. Because when it really counts, when a person has to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you didn't tell them, and you knew, you knew that there were areas that, that, that needed improvement, and you didn't say anything, you didn't give any nasiha. Where was that ta'awun ala al-bir wa taqwa? Where was that? Right? And again, I'm not saying that you, you know, you're harsh with it. No, I mean, you, you choose the best way. But al-mu'min mir'atul mu'min. The believer is, the, is a mirror for another believer. 
And, and, and if you think about it in that context, like if you had, you know, just ketchup and mustard all over your face, and you looked in the mirror, how, what would you do? Clean yourself up. Well, you're the, you're the mirror for other believers. You, if you see something, you have to say something. You know, so, I mean, the reality is, is that Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, is telling us here, be a judge of yourself before Allah. Be a judge of yourself before Allah. I forgot to change this. I'm sorry. So, <clears throat> if you... Uh, If you do muhasaba of yourself, and we kind of we talked about this before, but this is the reality of what has to be done here. As we begin to read these things, and you start saying, wait a minute, I'm falling short there, or I'm falling short here, then do muhasaba of yourself. Like, like Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who said, you know, hasibu and fusakum qabla and tuhasibu. Take account of yourself before the time comes when you are taken account of. And we're going to talk a little bit more about muhasaba. Uh, uh, when we get to the statement of Qatar, inshallah. Fala. Be a judge of yourself before Allah. Are you among those who run away from it or among those who run toward the Subhanallah. Gates? So people are of two categories. There's those who are trying to migrate to the Prophet, and then there's another group of people trying to get away, going the opposite direction. The definition, the definition of this migration is the soul's journey in each of the issues of belief, in each of the heart's dispositions, and in each of the, of the affairs that arise and require a rule. To the origin of guidance and source of light coming from the mouth of the truthful and trustworthy Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Stop right there. Stop right there. Okay, let's go over this definition again. Type. Somebody else read it. How does he define it? It's in bold, so just read it. What does it say? Go ahead. Hold on. The soul journey in each of the issues of belief. Okay. So we've got what? Issues of belief. Uh, mm-hmm. Each of the heart dispositions. The heart's dispositions. We'll talk about that in a minute. Inshallah. Each of the affairs that arise and require a ruling. And every affair that arises and requires a ruling. Okay. Uh -huh. So so the soul is supposed to journey where? Uh-huh. To the origin of guidance. Of light. To the origin of guidance and source of light. Okay, so even though it says the soul's journey, that the Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says safar al-fikr. And fikr is different than your soul, right? Fikr is, is your mind, your thoughts. So every so so here, where is it going? Where is your mind supposed to go in, in when it comes to these three things? Is supposed to go to the origin of guidance and the source of light. What is the origin of guidance here? Revelation. Revelation. Exactly. And that's why he said here, if you look back, he said, from the mouth of the truthful and trustworthy Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we're looking at three things here. He says what? Issues of belief. I want us to pay attention here because this is what it means to make hijrah. To the Prophet it's, it's, not a, um, it's not like if you make hijrah to, uh, to a different land. So you just um, you got on a plane, you went, and khalas, the journey's over. You made hijrah, it's over, right? Look, this hijrah is every single time you take a breath. All right? So in these three areas, you are supposed to always go back to the origin of guidance and the source of light. You're supposed to go back to revelation that came from Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In what? In issues of belief. In other words, everything that... And actually, it, it really is issues of iman, which is, which is different than issues of belief. Okay? But all everything related to what you believe... And what actually what you do, because all of that is part of Iman. But let's just, we'll go with issues of belief here. Uh, because it, it's everything that requires a ruling is coming. So, the things that you believe about the unseen, things that you believe about Allah, <coughs> things that you believe about Al Qadr, the last day, the angels, all, the books, to the end of it, all of that, where do you get that from? Hmm? 
You get that from the Prophet alayhi salatu was today. Right. Makes sense, right? Does everybody do that? I'm saying even people who ascribe themselves to Islam may use a different source for their information, as we'll talk about in a minute. Type. The heart's dispositions. What does that mean? Okay, who said that? Okay, how do you, how you respond to what? How you respond to the qadr. Okay, that's part of it. Uh, what else? Best, uh, not just inside the religion. How you feel, how you're supposed to feel about something. Now, somebody might come, and, and again, this is the part where it starts getting like, well, because we had look, Americans, we have problems, right? Like we believe nobody's supposed to tell us what to do. Where did we get that from? Like seriously, where did that come from? Nobody's supposed to. Well, uh, Islam's supposed to tell me how to feel. How I feel about something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, the Prophet was saying, check it out. He said, Inna ilmu, what? Bitta'allum. That's clear. Everybody knows that. You only get knowledge by what? Learning, right? So you actively learn. Wa inna mal hilmu bitta'allum. What's that mean? You, you only get f what? What did you call it? What is hilm? Like dream forbearance. La, la, not not, not hulm. <laughs> hilm is forbearance. When, when, you, when you just don't respond uh, like a madman anytime something goes down, right? So you have some you know, deliberation on certain things and you don't just react, right? I'll tell you. So if somebody said, well, that's just the way God made me, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, I just react quickly. Innamal hilm be bitahalum. Then you have to what? Try to learn how to not be that way. Because yes, Islam can tell you how you're supposed to feel. Now, and again, that doesn't mean you're totally changing your, your disposition. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala who was not like Omar radiallahu ta'ala. They were two different people, right? And both of that was inside of Islam. Like none, they, they weren't doing things that were against Islam. So Islam is not... To, it's not going to mold you out of what you are, right? But ultimately, if you have characteristics that are not the best, and then, or they're not even approved of by Islam, then you have to change the way you feel about certain things. Maybe you, you know, I mean, there are people who don't like fasting. Well, you got to change the way you feel. It's, it's not just that you have to fast. No, you have to do your best to like fasting. You, you understand? And if you struggle in that way, wallahi, if you walk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you take one step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to you. If you jog, if you, come, if you walk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will jog. He'll come to you running. But you got to take that step. And see, so this is the part here where Ibn al-Qayyim is talking about what? This is what it means to make hijrah to the Prophet was saying. And this is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to talk about sometimes. Because all of us have shortcomings. Every human being has shortcomings. There are areas where we fall short. Tell you, fight yourself. You know? Struggle with that. The heart's dispositions. Tell you. As he says. And then everything that requires a ruling. In other words, that you don't make a move. That is questionable, right? Until you check to see what did the Prophet is. Do we have any guidance from the Prophet on this particular issue? But a lot of people just do whatever they want to do, and then they ask questions afterward. And subhanAllah, if you've ever, you know, if you if you've ever been overseas and you make Hajj, for example. There's so many people, they just do whatever they want to do, and then they try to go find a mufti that can make it right for them. And it's just way, you know, subhanAllah. Even though it was one right up the street, sitting in a booth, they could have went and asked him before he did it, but let me just go do it, get it out the way. 
Hajj is over, and then I go ask how I can fix it. SubhanAllah. But the point is that in, in, in making that hijrah to the Prophet ﷺ, and everything that we're going to do, we look to see what's the guidance of the Prophet when it comes to these particular issues. And we try to do our best. So, uh, using your own words, how did Ibn al-Qayyim define the hijrah to the Prophet ﷺ? Your own words. You got three areas, and he's saying what? It's the... So yeah, but he says suffer al fikr. So here it says the soul's journey, but but really closer, it's it's the it's the mind's journey. It's your thoughts going in this direction. Okay, going where? Where where is your mind going to? Right. So you so exactly because anytime we talk about a hijra, we always talking about a what? A from and a to. So it's from whatever your preconceived notions might be, whatever your biases may be, whatever your hoa is telling you to do, right? And now you're going from that point, you're going to the source of revelation. Okay. When it comes to these three areas, which actually cover everything, when it comes to iman and what you believe, when it comes to how you should feel and what you do. Okay, all of that should be governed by Islam. Now, tell you, follow this. Okay, yeah, and he says because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as. So we're we're at the bottom of page twenty-five. I'm just going to read this real quick because actually what it says uh, in the Arabic it doesn't have the first ayah, which is Madallah Sahibukum Maghawa. It says Allah describes him. He says, from the mouth of the truthful and trustworthy, He doesn't speak from his own desire. It is only revelation that has been revealed to him. Type. An issue is acceptable. Father. An issue is acceptable only if the light of his message irradiates it. Yeah, and he illuminates it. It illuminates it is uh, probably a better term there. Otherwise, it deserved to be sunk into the seas of darkness. Yeah, I mean, in other words, in other words, any any actions the Prophet ﷺ said, "Man amila amal leis alehi amruna, for who I mean, whoever uh, does an action that does not have uh, precedent in my teachings, then it is rejected. So here he's saying the issue is only acceptable if it's if it has the light of his message to the light of shining on it. Otherwise, it deserves to be in the seas of darkness. Now. A witness is acceptable only if he is approved by this pure and truthful one, sallallahu Otherwise, you can deem him among the suspected and accused. <clears throat> yes, yeah. Laziness and indifference. How then could a man who is enslaved by his base instincts and earthly inclinations undertake this migration? A man who does not want to part with the place where he was born and raised? A man who says, we only follow our father's way, hold to their tradition, and trace their footsteps. How could he undertake it when his ancestors were incapable of doing so, and yet he fully relies on them in determining his way of success and salvation, claiming that their opinion should be better and sounder than his. Yeah, and this is this is a uh, let's just say it's a a lot of times a psychological barrier for people. Um, some who will not accept Islam in the first place and will not follow the Prophet Sallam because uh, his or her parents, grandparents, and so forth, you know, follow the particular religion, and so they. They're saying, yeah, I think what you actually think what you're saying is the truth. Uh, I'm just, you know, they don't want to be a Muslim because they, you know, family tradition. SubhanAllah. And then there are others who don't follow the sunnah, Muslims who don't follow the sunnah of the Prophet, even though they know it's the sunnah because orf. Uh, yeah, it is the customs of, of our people. This is how we do our weddings, you know. This is how we do this. This is how we do this janazah. This is how we do this. 
It's like that's not the sunnah of the Prophet and it's against Islam. Now, like, yeah, yeah, we know, but yeah, this is what the other This is the way we do it. La hawla la quwwata inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Nah. If you investigate the reason for saying this, you find it a combination of laziness and indifference. So this is actually interesting. The way that um, uh, Ibn Al-Qayyim, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, it's difficult to translate. He says, so here he says, you find it a combination of laziness and indifference. He says, it is, it is the, the child, okay, of laziness and his wife indifference. And so he, Ibn al-Qayyim is basically laying out this, this scheme for you to understand that when laziness and indifference come together, then the product of those two are these type of statements that you just heard. Okay? That's, that's, that's where they come from. So yeah. we just, yeah, we just follow the way our, you know, everybody else before us did it. I, I mean, following the Sunnah as this requires a little too much energy, requires too much reading, trying to figure out what's the right way to do something. You know, that takes time. That takes time. And it's just like, no, nah, we just do it the way everybody else did it. It, 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 this is not to buck tradition, by the way. I mean, it, Islam, alhamdulillah. Huh? What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's a real proper English. <laughs> no, that's a real proper English word. That's not. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's not to break tradition or to look down on. Alhamdulillah, Islam has been practiced. Right? Islam has been practiced. And we can't just come and say, oh, well, I found this, this, um, this one hadith from somewhere without gathering the rest of the evidence for it and looking at it and then looking at, okay, well, why did so many of the ulama say this, for example? Hey, well, this, is not, this is not that. This is not where we're just totally negating or uh, acting as if tradition was not there. The, the, the issue is that a lot of the things that people do are, are contrary to Islam in every account. Like, no scholar would agree with them on that, right? But it's just they mixed in whatever culture they had to Islam, and then these are more, uh, let's just say, you know, I think the term that they use today is cultural Muslims or something, right? Where, or, or Muslim by name. Uh, but not really learn, you know, not, not people that are putting the time into actually learn about Islam or, um, you know, have, have put in that kind of effort. Allah Mustafa. The application of migration to the messenger. This migration to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is required from every Muslim. It follows directly from the second part of the shahada, ash'adu wa minnaat, anna muhammad, ash'adu anna muhammad rasulullah. Hmm. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's messenger. Okay. What does it mean when you testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's messenger? Hmm. Ibn Tamir. No, you're going to know today, inshallah. <laughs> huh? Uh, what does that mean? Follow him. What does that mean? Yes. When you make a conscious decision and effort to apply yourself on the, in the, you know, to follow him and to, 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 to understand what he, he, uh, he was hit with. Okay. That he is the guidance uh, for, for Allah. He, he is for guidance. He is the guidance for Allah. Okay. So it means to accept everything that he came with. Okay. To ex to accept everything that he came with in terms of okay, Allah says in the Quran, "Wa ma arsalna min rasulin illa liyuta'a bi idnillah." Okay, so I have not sent any messenger except for with this purpose, which is what to be obeyed bi idnillah. Man, Subhanallah, we'll cover some of this inshallah maybe as the time is up because uh, Sa'di rahimahullah has some really nice claim about this. But anyway. So the first thing, when you testify that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah, is what? That you what? Obey him. Because that's what Allah sent messengers for what purpose? To be obeyed. 
So if you testify, so okay, so you believe in Allah and you believe that Allah sent messengers to be obeyed. Like that's your first proposition. Second, I believe that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is the messenger of Allah. Therefore, what? Therefore, obeying him is part of that testimony. So, ta'atuhu fi ma amar. Obeying him in that which he has commanded. What tasdiquhu fi ma akhbar. And to believe in everything. What did you, how did you put it, Tarnik? No, it was good. It was a, Right. To accept and believe in everything that the Prophet Sallallahu informed us of. So that may not require necessarily obedience in the sense that there's, there may not be anything that you're actually doing. But the Prophet ﷺ informed us what's going to happen when a person is in his grave. The Prophet ﷺ informed us that he saw jinn. The Prophet ﷺ informed us that he was raised to the seventh heaven. So, that, so we believe in those things because the Prophet ﷺ what? Informed us. And he's a sadiq al masduq right? He is the truthful one who is believed. So when we say that we testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, then we, then we are testifying to what? That we obey him in that which he commands. That we believe him in whatever he informs. Yes? Listen, listen, listen. Listen. Tayyip. The, no, number three is the opposite of number one. Or it's, right. And that you stay away from the things that he, he prohibits. Tayyip. And then there's one last thing. And it makes sense when you think about it. You only worship Allah in the way that he prescribed. In the way that he prescribed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tayyip. So, if we say, what does it mean to testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, because this is that part of that hijrah, is to obey him, to believe in what he says, to avoid disobeying him, and to worship Allah the way that he prescribed. Clear? Tell you, Fadl, this is similar. This is similar, similar to the first type of migration to Allah. It follows from the first part of the shahada. Ash'adu an ash'adu an la ilaha illa Allah. I bear witness that there's no, there's no God at all except Allah. Every person is required to ascribe to these two forms of migration in this worldly life. The barzakh and the home of the final abode. Tight. So every person is required to ascribe to these two forms of my, is to undertake these two forms of migration in these three places. This worldly life, you are required to undertake those two forms of migration because they result from the shahadatain. And the shahadatain are a requirement for us in this life. That's how, that, that guides us, that, that sets the parameters for how we live. The barzakh and the home of the final abode, tayyib. He will also he will also be questioned about them, both in Barzakh and on the day of resurrection. Tayyip, what does that mean? He'll be questioned about them on the Barzakh. By the two angels. I sent. Because the two angels ask what? Marabuk. Right? And Madinuk and Manabiyuk. Tayyip. So it, it, the the that is covered in what we just talked about. That is your hijratain. And on the day of resurrection, Father, I don't, that one should not be there. Yeah. This is the day of resurrection. Then just, just say Qatada. Okay, Qatada, Allah said, Kalimatani, Kalimatani, Yusadu Anhal al Awadun wal Akhirun, Mada Kuntum Ta'budun, Wa Mada Ajabtumul Mursaleen. The earlier and later people will be asked two questions on the day of judgment. What did you worship and what was your response to the messengers? Yeah. These Those, two things mm -hmm. are the con content of two part of the two parts of the shahada. Tayyip. So here, okay, number one, Qatada, Rahimahullah. Even you can say radiallahu an, but normally when we say radiallahu an, it gives the uh, impression that that person is a sahabi. 
in Qatada as a tabi'i, rahimahullah. However, this statement, I haven't found that any of the books with a isnad on Qatada. Uh, it's the statement of Abu Aliya, Abu Aliya, rahimahullah ta'ala, and even uh, in uh, Shaykh al-Islam's books, uh, Shaykh al-Islam and Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he attributes this to Abu Aliya. And, in fact, uh, hmm. Ibn al-Qayyim somewhere else, either in Igatha al Ahfan or in uh, Madaj al King, another book that he wrote, he also attributed this to, to Abu Aliya. So I think this is a mistake. Allah alam. Also, if you're reading the Arabic, it shouldn't say yus'alu anha, it should say yus'alu anhuma. Yus'alu anhuma. That, that's, it's like that in the, in the actual Arabic. Tight. So, Abu Aliya, rahimahullah ta'ala says, there are two statements, two questions that all people, the earlier people and those who come after, will be asked on the Day of Judgment. Mada kuntum ta'budun? What did you used to worship? And Mada Ajabatumul Mursaleen. So the first question, what did you worship, is a question Anil Ma'bud. And the second question is a question Anil Ibadah. So the first question is dealing with the entity that you worshipped, and the second question deals with how you perform that worship. Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala says that the first question, what did you worship, is about ikhlas, and the second question is about mutaba'ah, and your emulation of the Messenger, alayhi salatu was salam. Where does this come from? This comes from Surah Al Qasas, or the, the, the questions themselves, or where did, where did Abu Aliya uh, get this from? Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, says in Surah Al-Qasr وَيَوْمِ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُوا أَيْنَ الشُّرَكَائِ أَيْنَ الشُّرَكَائِ الَّذِينَ كُنْتُمْ تَزْعُمُونَ On that day, Allah will call out to them and say, Where are my partners whom you used to claim? أَيْنَ الشُّرَكَائِ So in other words, what did you used to worship? Did you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone? Or did you worship partners along with Allah? Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of uh, those ayat, وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُ مَاذَا أَجَبَتُمُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And on that day he will call out to them and say, how did you respond to my messengers? Not just the acceptance as in, I accepted that this person is a messenger, because once you accept that he's a messenger, then you have to do what? You have to obey him. That's it. Because disobeying him would be disobeying the mursil, the one who sent him which would be disobedience to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, subhanAllah, um, the, these are just things that you have to let sink in. You have to let them sink in. And you see how those two questions, so Abu Ali says that there's two questions based off of these ayat that you'll be asked on Yawm al-Qiyamah. jabatum al Or for, before that, ma'da kuntum ta'budun. What did you used to worship? And how did you respond to, to the messengers? Right. And that directly relates to the shahadatayn. Because what did you used to worship? La ilaha illallah. How did you respond to the messengers? Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. I testify that he's the messenger of Allah. Therefore, I'm obeying him. I'm not going to disobey him. I'm going to believe everything he says. And I'm going to worship Allah the way that he said to worship him. Right? So, therefore, those two questions are directly related to the shahadatayn. And the hijrah to Allah is the natural, what naturally follows, testifying to la ilaha illallah. And the hijrah to the Messenger is what naturally follows, the shahada, the Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Tayyip. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I still got five minutes. I'm, in, uh, I'm taking all 300 seconds, inshallah. Allah says, Fala wa la yeah, because 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 this is uh, this is uh, 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 harf al qasam, and so right. so just like just like you say wallahi, right? Wallahi, so warabbik, fala warabbik. Fala warabbik la yu'minun hatta yuhakimuk fi ma shagra bainahum. ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قد 
مما خليته ويسلم تسليما. But no, by your Lord, they will not believe until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes, all disputes that arise among them, and then find, and they find within themselves no resistance against your judgment and submit to it with the fullest submission. Test. Excellent. So, uh, what we're going to do, inshallah, um, subhanAllah, so much to cover. All right. <sighs> Uh, I'm going to, I want to make it, I want to go through some of this, um, now, and we're just going to have to not go through all of it. So, Ibn al-Qayyim now, he tell, he, he defines for us what the hijrah to the Prophet is. He has talked about the importance of this hijrah. He talks about the fact that we're going to be questioned about this hijrah on Yom al qiyamah He talks about the importance of it in this life. And then he wants to now lay out for us the textual evidence for this hijrah. In other words, okay, we, we've talked about what his definition is, and all, but what evidence can you provide to show that this is in reality a requirement for me? And, the, and so this is evidence number one. What I want you to do uh, even though evidence is uncountable, so Sheikh Hanif gets mad at me when I say evidences, right? Because um, it's not right. <laughs> but um, so uh, what are we going to say? Okay, so this is the first piece of evidence, huh? the first text here. Uh, and then if you go, uh, I'll, I'll let you do this. Skip to page 34 and write for number three. At 34, where you, you see where it says the prophet's right on believers and Nabiu Ola bil the prophet has a higher claim. Everybody see that? Yeah. That's a Dalil Athani. Okay? The second text. Or the second piece of evidence. All right. So, and then what, what we'll do, inshallah, once we get to the Dalil Athani, then I'll take you and I'll show you where the Dalil Athalith is, where the third piece of evidence is, because what I want you to make sure is that you're following the, the line of thinking of Ibn al-Qayyim. It's, it's very good. You can get lost in the sauce if you don't. So if, if you just keep going and you're trying to figure out, well, why, why, how did he get here? And how did he get there? What, right? So it's important to know. So these next, right, as you read, you'll see pages 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. All of them are just dealing with what? This ayah. Everything that we're going to cover is just dealing with this first ayat, okay? Even though there might be other ayat that come up, other hadith that come up, all of this comes under the umbrella of the first piece of evidence for what? To prove that the hijrah to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an absolute must, an absolute obligation. So he starts off, and I'm, I'm going to end in... Yeah, I, I've, I've got just a half a minute. But, but let me just point out this, and then we'll get to this next week, because this is powerful and it's important. He says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the greatest oath, swearing by himself. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by many things in the Quran. But there's nothing greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there's no oath that is stronger and more emphasized than when he swears by himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, this, when Allah azza wa jal swears, it's serious. And when he swears by himself, it's even more serious. This is a serious matter. La yu'minun. They do not believe. And I know we, we, you know, we like to put truly in parentheses and things like that. Leave it the way it comes and then we'll explain it, inshallah. Right? They don't believe that Iman will not be confirmed for a person, nor would he count as one of the believers until he makes the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a judge in all issues of dispute and in all aspects of the deen. You see, the Prophet ﷺ said not too long before he died. And, and he was preaching in a way that they felt like this was a, 
موعظة مودع يعني it's like this is the a, a, a person who's like leaving us he wants to tell us something فأوصينا give us some advice O Messenger of Allah command us tell us what to do the Prophet said إنه من يعيش منكم فسير اختلافا كثيرا whoever from amongst you all he's talking to the companions he's talking to the companions رضي الله عنه whoever from amongst you all lives will see great differing. He wasn't talking about between the Muslims and the Christians, the Muslims and the Jews, the Muslims and the Persian, uh, the fire worshipers. And, no. He was talking about amongst those who claim Islam. سَيَرَ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Not قَلِيلًا كَثِيرًا You will see a lot of great differing. طيب. The Prophet was the one who had the most concern for this ummah. So he didn't just leave them. And he, you're going to see a lot of differing as if to prove I'm a prophet. Right? So I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. And it, wasn't his, it, it wasn't his point. You want, you want to be saved? You, you want a way out of all of this fitna and all of the differing and everything else that's going on? Follow this sunnah. سنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعدي in the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifas who come after me we, time is up but I, I just want us to understand this ayah is powerful because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolutely negating iman from those people who don't make the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a judge and subhanallah I mean there are people who say yeah we follow the sunnah and they follow their shaykh right? it's not even about the sunnah if the shaykh didn't say it they don't, you can tell them the Prophet was saying, yeah, but the sheikh, the sheikh said that that means this. And the sheikh said that that means that. And you need to go to the sheikh. Never mind. I'm not going to go there. But the point is that the Prophet and I'm saying this is across the bridge. This is not singling out one group. There are many Muslims who follow many different ways who, though the claim is that we love the Messenger, alayhi salatu was and though the claim is that we love Allah, it remains a claim until it is backed up with action. And Allah said to the Prophet called in kuntum to hibbun Allah. If you really love Allah, fatabi'uni. Follow me. This is what the Prophet said. So it, it's it's not about claims. It, it really is about action. Well, and to hib. The issue is not that you love or that you claim to love. Well, like in the shatin. And to have the real issue is that you be loved, that Allah love you. And that only happens with the following the Prophet. Again, this is very broad, this is very general. What does it mean to follow the Prophet? These are the things that Ibn Qayyim is laying out in this in this risala. And this is what we're going to be digging into, inshallah, in the following weeks. Be idni lahi ta'ala wallahu ta'ala alam subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha 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 il